Okay, everybody. Welcome to the broadcast. This is Information Man. Thank you for being here. I want to give a big clap out to everybody that's listening in the chat room, that's listening out in YouTube land, and also a big shout out to everybody listening in the radio podcast. This is Radio Live as well. This is the format that I'll be using from time to time. Now, you all are familiar now with my uh, installment of the Black to Black uh, series. I put two installments in. That will be the style of that show, sort of that Matrix type style. And then uh, I had to rethink a few things. I think uh, there's certain uh, stories that I will do live on my podcasting, my radio broadcasting program uh, in this style and fashion when it comes to certain issues. And then I'll do the stuff that's sort of unusual stories, some of the stuff that goes bump in the night stuff. I'll do in the Matrix style of my Black to Black series. So I hope everyone out there is doing fine. Here's a clap for everybody. I want to thank everybody for uh, being here uh, and being, being supportive. So what I want to do uh, is get right into this and why I get into this. Give me a minute to uh, sort of... Um, Get over to my article here. This is going to be a breaking report for all of you. As you see on the description of the video, I'm going to be talking about reparations. Um, on YouTube and the news and abroad, um, there's been a lot of debate about this ever since the whole ADOS has come into play here. And I know people have their various opinions about ADOS. I know there's people who have their various opinions about, let me fix my volumes there, have their various opinions about the whole issue of reparations. I know that there's black people out there who feel that, you know what, why are we wasting our time on that? Um, because we're never going to get it. Um, there's some black folks that will say that, well, you know, if you give black people a check, they're just simply going to spend that money and give it right back uh, to the very people who they're saying owe them. OK, it's let me just say this. Look, no matter where you are on this on this um, on the ladder with this whole issue, it does not change the fact that um, black people were in shackle slavery. OK, we do know that there were black people that were aborigine. OK, so 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 to my aborigine brothers out there, this is no slide against you either, because I understand that uh, black people are from all over the damn world. OK, we're from the universe, dark matter. OK, everywhere they dig in the world, they end up digging up black bones. So we're everywhere. I don't think we really need to get into a debate about where black folks come from because we're from the whole globe. OK, as uh, public enemy said many years ago, fear of a black planet. OK, so let's keep that in mind. Uh, so no, no matter where you are on that debate, the bottom line is there was a wrong done to those black people who can trace their history back to plantations, trace their history back to the good ship Jesus, black folks that can trace their history to Virginia um, and North Carolina, which were some of the first slave colonies, Virginia being the first one, North Carolina being the second, and you have South Carolina, okay? Then you have Maryland. These were, these particular states where they had slaves were also known for, I know Maryland, I think in Virginia, were known as breeding, where they would purposely do horrible things um, to make black women at that time have babies because there was a value on black babies on black people because we were seen as property okay and we were emancipated now some people believe that lincoln freed the slaves i'm here to tell you that's not true there's a book that i read when i was in college called bell's capitalism and slavery get that book and in that book, it's sort of like a law brief or it's a legal book. So you have to understand the legal jargon and all that sort of stuff. It's a legal uh, document. And um, this particular document, excuse me for a minute here, let me fix something. OK, back now, this document <clears throat> breaks down the fact that Lincoln 
only freed the slaves in order to way to keep the union together. If he could do it without that, he would have kept us in slavery and he only freed a few. OK, now I want to I want to go over here and introduce you all to an article. And for everybody out there listening, I hope you like the new studio. When I do this radio style, it will be in this studio. So I'm trying to give you all different types of looks and styles for the program. So there's an article. There's a brother by the name of Marcus H. Johnson. i got to give him credit for this. Marcus H. Johnson, he has a Twitter page. You can follow him on there if you're interested. Um, he's sort of a blogger. Um, the brother came up with some he came up with some plans some things that may be tangible that may make some sense he talks here here's what a reparation plan could look like okay now he makes an opening statement in his article that i don't agree with where he goes into this whole jargon about several 2020 democrat democratic candidates that have embraced the concept of reparations for slavery elizabeth warren kamala harris Julian Castro, uh, Bernie. Um, but this is a, a misnomer because uh, this is one of the things we have to understand when it comes to politics. In politics, there's no permanent enemies. There's no permanent friends. There's only permanent interests. OK, the only thing that politicians really care about is what the permanent interest is because they want to stay in office. Now, a lot of these candidates, they weren't for reparations, but what's happened is they're feeling the pressure that's being put on them by black folks and black folks that who, who are pushing and representing the whole ADOS movement, okay? And what's happening is, is that black people have been on this, what we would call a democratic plantation for way too long. And now it's a time for us to start to hold them accountable for the things that they have not done You've got the uh, do nothing, uh, the Miss Black leadership class of the uh, Black Caucus who have done nothing. They have been living off the past, which I think in this case is the civil rights movement. But my thing is tangibles. That's what's being said on YouTube. That's what's being said uh, in the media right now. And everybody out there in speaker.com, that's listen, speaker that's listening, speaker that's listening to me. Excuse me, folks. Um, hear me out here. The voice of the people is that we want tangibles. Black people want tangibles today. What are those tangibles? We want money. We want programs that are directed towards us. People, black people who can trace their descendancy, their ancestry to black people that were slaves on a plantation. Now, this is where we always get this twisted. People will try to put us in this little this trick bag and say, oh, well, how are you going to identify who was a slave? Uh, how are you going to identify who's black, who's not black, because you have mixed race people, all this sort of stuff. And my argument to that is that it's not just slavery. We can reach back into what has happened to black people, whether it be, um, let's see, you got Black Wall Street, you got Rose, uh, Roseville, Okay, what happened there? Roseville. We all knew what happened there. That was a town that got all burned down. Now, I'm kind of pausing here because <laughs> there were black townships that got destroyed. Black towns, thriving towns that were destroyed because of racism. Not to mention you had redlining, you had Jim Crow, you had black code laws, you had black men that were hung uh, by trees like fruit It's Billie Holiday uh, spoke of in her songs okay you had black people that were being redlined not getting loans we were being pushed out of housing we were living in a time in this country when you had separate but not equal black people were living separate but did not have equal access to the law did not have equal access to education proper educational tools and facilities okay black people were pretty much left out of the economic growth of, of this country although this country used us uh, in our backs to push forth the success that America is having today. So you can go, and then not to mention you've had black uh, people who had land, land that was stolen from them, okay? 
uh, not to mention black inventors who've given a hell of a lot to this country and their inventions were stolen. Many who could not get patents. And a lot of times you had whites that would get the patents and then steal the invention. OK, we think that Thomas Edison uh, created the light bulb and that's not true. It was Brother Jackson Granville who did this, but it got his invention stolen from him. OK, so there's many things that have happened. Let me see. Let me just read this here. As the brother goes into, um, let me see. We cannot forget reparations are also a vigorous op uh, opposal by white voters of all classes and, and political affiliations. Let me read that again. Black people have inspired to receive reparations for generations. This is a generational thing. But the concept has long been rejected by political parties in the United States of America. We can't forget that political affiliations, that reparations are also opposed by white voters, all classes and political affiliations. So all classes of White people in America, rich or poor, middle, whatever, don't uh, really agree with it. And I know that white people would say that they had nothing to do with slavery because it was they weren't born then. But what you forget to understand is that you benefit from it economically. Most of the uh, major cities, port cities like Chicago, New York, Boston, uh, and a lot of these companies, these title companies that still exist today and some of these corporations today that are filthy rich. They got their start in the trans-American slave trade in slavery. So they owe us. The whole damn world owes us, okay? Europe, okay? okay. Arabs that were involved in it, um, Europeans, Portuguese. It was a global situation that everyone had their hands in, okay? Um, I know people say that Africans, Ghana, Nigerians, they had their hands in uh, particularly uh, selling us off. There's all sort of theories and, and ops of opposition to who did it, who didn't do it. But the fact of the matter is we do know that something did happen because there is documents to prove this. OK, let me go on. Black voters are likely to become more emboldened in their political demand. Yeah, this is one of the things that I learned when I was in school is that power. I had a professor who told me, Dr. Richards was her name. That power conceives nothing without a demand. Tell the truth. I believe uh, Wade Nobles, Oba Tshaka. These are some of the folks that I, I learned from some of the best when I was in school. And um, power conceives nothing without a demand. If we do not demand, we do not get. And a lot of times, I think, as black people in America, we, we complain about a lot of things. Well, why did the gays get this from Obama? Why did the Latinos get this from Obama? But the point of the matter is that those groups got what they got because they had an agenda. They stayed to it. They pressured, they pressured, they pressured into pipes, you know, pipes bust under pressure. Now, when you look at the Native Americans, I think uh, there were 17 tribes that sued uh, this country. It was a vigorous trial over a period of time. And they won about four hundred ninety five ninety eight million dollars, um, maybe even more than that. And I know that people are going to say, well, that was 17 tribes. Black people are in the middle. We're 13 percent of the population. Um, but we have to be vigorous. Now, those of us who are saying that we're not going to get reparations may not be alive to get it. OK, you, you, you may not be alive, but it's about our generational. It's about generation. Black people were also stripped of the ability to develop generational wealth. I believe that we should have went with the Booger T. Washington philosophy, even though W.E. Du Bois was talking about education, upper nobility, the talented 10. I think we kind of failed there by not going with the economics because Booger T. Washington was talking about owning your own businesses, your own land. Land is very, very important because land, property, resources is what develops wealth. Most of us gain our wealth in America through home ownership. That's very important. Now, the concept of reparations here that I outlined, this is what Brother uh, Bronson outlined, does not simply pre pretend to a random for a, a wage for, for lost wages due to slavery. After all, significant portions of the racial wealth gap is also due to what happened afterwards. Jim Crow, racial terrorism, 
sanctioned by the state. Yeah, each state in this country sanctioned um, terrorism. That terrorist groups were Ku Klux Klan, uh, many, many hate groups that you have today. You got the off-right today. You got these skinhead type groups that are pretty much infiltrated themselves into legitimate society today. Okay? And we have to be aware of that. Uh, let me see. Jim Crow, terrorism. You had Brother uh, Emmett Till. We know what happened to him by the Klan, how, did, how did they did various things to us. Once again, the destruction of Black Wall Street. Okay? Institutional uh, barriers that were put before black people. Uh, you know, you had black people who were not allowed to go to certain schools. We weren't allowed to live in certain places. We weren't allowed. We were under emotional terrorism as well as physical terrorism and a stress and anxiety, you know, you know, and even and then also remember the Green Book where black people uh, could not even travel across this country without the fear of being harassed. Now, the fear of not knowing where they could use the bathroom, sleep and eat. So the Green Book was created to give black people safe passage going across this country as to where they could eat, drink, sleep, rest, relax. OK, this is another part of Jim Crow. OK, let me see. Black Americans today personally live through. Uh, let me see this here. Let me I'm going to. Um, Read this part. Black people from being able to compete on a equal playing field and level politically and economically, socially playing field. OK, so uh, economically, socially and politically, we were never allowed to be able to thrive in those areas. And people always say, well, you know, we always compare ourselves. People like to compare us to other groups, Asians. But those groups came over here with their culture intact. We did not come over here as in, in, immigrants. They did with culture and values, religion intact. Black people, our problem is that we've never been able to be our, truly ourselves, to have our language, our culture, what we think is our culture. Now, those of you who like hip hop, I like hip hop music. That's, you know, that type of, but we've, we, we acquaint our culture too much with this street mentality, which does not really represent who black people were and our dignity and who we are as a people. So let's keep that in mind. Um, now, let me go right here. Let me hit this here. Tell the truth. Let me play. Let me go ahead while I try to like uh, fix my monitor here. <laughs> Okay, let me get back to it now. There's a strong moral case for reparations, but there is also a contemporary economic case as well. As more candidates talk about the wealth gap between the 1% and the 99%, it becomes impossible not to highlight the wealth gap between medium white families and medium black families. In 2014, the Pew, Re the Pew Research found that the medium white household had a net worth of hmm, 100,000, uh, 41, and 900. Okay, so we're looking at um, 141, 900, while the medium black household net worth stood at only 11,000, 11,000. The goal of reparation is to close the racial wealth gap. Now, this brother said that he decided to draw up some ideas of what that would actually look like. Here we go. What would a reparations actually look like? It is important to note that reparations would be race specific as opposed to a race neutral. That's damn right. Um, reparations definitely have to be um, race specific, specifically targeting groups of people in this country who fall under this um, protocol of what, what has happened to us in this country. OK, and we know that uh, black people have paid a heavy price. 
Like I said, we're talking about, like, like ADOS says, it's going from the 1600s to 1800s to 1900s up until today. So for those that will say, well, we ain't gonna, how are you gonna prove this? It's, you can, we can prove a lot of things currently that has happened. Oh, and, and I also wanna make this statement too. For the critics of what I'm saying and to the critics of this whole thing in the first place, who say we're never going to get it while you're talking about it. Look, black people, we can chew gum, ride a bicycle, and <laughs> drink, <laughs> walk, talk at the same time. We can do multi, we can multitask, okay? To say that we to, to say that we can't, it limits us. We should never limit ourselves. God gave us a mind and has full capacity that we need to use it. Now, what I also want to say is that the same people that will criticize the whole idea of black people wanting re reparations, meaning other black people, if they were to cut a check, or give us some reparation. I bet you any kind of money, the very people that would criticize us for wanting such reparations would be the first to have their hands open to gladly take part in the money. Now, we should really stop pocket watching and going into this whole thing about what well, black people are gonna give. Not all black people are, re are, are, are ridiculous and don't know how to manage their money. See, when you make those kind of narratives you're using the narratives of the very people that have been oppressing us. We got to be very careful with that. Not that's to say that all black people don't know how to manage their money. That all black people don't know how to invest their money properly. That's why when you have a reparations program, one of the things that should come with it is stipulations such as education, under, business courses, understanding proper invest, proper in, uh, investing. Okay, so there's a lot of things that you could do to prevent. Of money from being misspent, but is it really our business to tell other people, if they were to get a check, how to spend their money? The point of the whole goal is not how to people spend their money, but the fact that money is is needed is due. Money is deserving. Now we can also get into the whole thing about how people should manage their money. I mean, do we all manage our money properly with the money that we make at work? Some of us don't do a great job. Some of us do. So let's just keep that in mind. What would reparations actually look like? Important to note that reparations would be race specific, as I said. This means that only African Americans would be eligible to receive reparations. Damn Skippy. This is opposed, this is opposed to most economic plans proposed by the United States politicians, okay, which tends to be race neutral. So Politicians, when they introduce these things, they want to be race neutral. But this in this case, no, that's not what we're asking for. Race neutral plans such as the free college plan promote, promoted by Bernie Sanders in 2016 tends to be more popular in the polls. However, race neutral plans have a poor track record of actually curving the racial wealth gap. In the case of higher education, folks, research has shown that a college degree does not improve the income gap. I think uh, Brother Tone talks, talks about this on his program. Okay? So just because you have a college education does not mean that it closes the ratio, the, uh, the wealth gap. And there's many people who go to school and don't even use a degree that they went to school for. Now, I'm lucky I'm using mine, but these things do happen. So it's something to keep in mind. Let me go ahead and um, I hope everybody out there um, is enjoying this style of program and how I'm doing it. I really appreciate everyone's support out there. Tell the truth. And uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel, please. You are listening to Information Man. Please make sure to subscribe to his channel. Yes, thank you. Thank you for the support. Okay. So here we go. In the terms of wealth, black college graduates have less wealth than white high school graduates. It's a damn shame. A race-specific plan, however, would be able to provide capital, property, low-interest loans, or other set-aside directly to African Americans or black people. Let me just say black people, okay? These 
These programs should be set aside directed to black people in America is what I would rather say. What I feel is the right, the right way to say this, in my opinion, without whites receiving the same benefits. OK, now the question is, why would white people receive these benefits when they have never been in a situation where they've had their growth, their economic growth and their opportunities stunted as black people have had a lot of our opportunities stunted. Now, how many out there have seen uh, the raisin in the sun? Put a one in the chat room, put a one, say something uh, if you have, because that was a movie where uh, you had a black family. Uh, the brother had came into some money. The family had came into some inheritance, what you would call generational wealth at that time from the father who had worked to the bones to get the money. And they wanted him to use the money to buy a home. And when he decided to buy a home in a certain type of neighborhood, redlining is real. Um, they didn't want uh, this black family moving into the neighborhood. They did everything they could to keep them from. And these are the sort of practices that went on in this country routinely, routinely. Tingly. It's very explosive. And remember, folks, you're listening, you're listening, you're listening, you're listening, you're listening. Okay. So low ink, low interest loans or other uh, um, assets directed to African Americans without whites receiving the same benefits. So it was assets is what I should have said the first time. This would un <laughs> doubtly be less popular politically, but it would do far more to actually close the racial wealth gap in American society. Okay. Now, the brother goes on to say this. Obviously, one of the biggest issues with race-specific programs is the question of how to determine eligibility. Now, I know a lot of you are going to be asking that too. Info man, but who's eligible for this? Okay. What about people that are mixed race? What about uh, black folks that come from other parts of the world, the Caribbean, Africa? Look, we know that in the Caribbean, they're already fighting against the UK for reparations. We know in the UK, they're doing the same thing. We know the French, are, the, we know that the Haitians are asking for their reparations. Every other group of black people in the diaspora of the world are demanding uh, reparations. Okay. So let me continue to go on. So obviously the biggest issue is race specific program was a question of how to determine eligibility. Now, is it African Americans, regardless of their lineage? That's a question mark. Is it only the, the descendants of slaves in the United States? Another question mark for you to answer folks. How would the lineage be identified and proven? Those are questions that would perhaps be answered by the Department of Reparations, which I talk about a bit later in this piece. Now, he's going to talk about the Department of Reparations. So what he's talking about, the part, there should be a Department of Reparations. Now, personally, this brother says he favors the, inclu the, the inclusion of African-Americans regardless of lineage. So he's basically saying regardless of your lineage, any black people in America should benefit from this. But I specifically feel, as ADOS feels, that it needs to be tangible to black people in America who family members directly were impacted by the deeds, the misdeeds and mistreatment of this country, okay, towards black citizens. OK, because in the other parts of the world, black people are not putting their butting into the business and affairs of black people in South Africa, Nibia, or places around the world where black people are demanding what is rightly. We're not butting into their business and saying, hey, give it to me. OK, so, you know, people are going to be butt hurt, but everybody's got to hold their own. You know what? OK, because uh. We're talking about black people in America and what we and our people, our fathers, our grandfathers, great uncles, great fathers and ancestors went through. OK. This is very important. So let me go next uh, into what he's saying. The brother goes on to say this. This takes us to the actual meat of the program. 
What would reparations benefit actually include? That's another question mark. Now, the brother says this. He believes there, there are a few different options. The goal is to close the racial wealth gap or at least to shrink it significantly. Now, the total labor cost of slavery and financial opportunities lost due to Jim Crow. And as I said, we can demand these reparations, not just about what happened a thousand, uh, in slavery. From We're talking about even black folks that have been here. And I know that there's uh, white people who came over here as addition servants from Europe because they were the criminals of Europe. Guess what? They were made whole by Europe. OK, all these. And so so for those of you that would give me the argument about, well, there were white people that were addition servants. Well, those white folks that were addition servants over here, Europe made them whole, even though they were the criminals that left Europe. OK. Just like Australia. How many of you know that Australia is nothing but a slave colony? Was it? No, no. Hey, correct that. I'm correcting that right now. Australia was a prison colony for the criminals that were booted out of Europe at that time. Okay? So I had to correct that statement. You're listening, You're listening, You're listening, 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 listening. And thank you for listening to the program. One of the things that I've always learned is that information is power. Information is power. Yes, it is. So let me continue to move on. So now, sits in the tens of trillions. Now, is it possible <laughs> that trillions, ton, tens and trillions of dollars is owed to black people? Now, I've been on panels and people will say, well, America would go bankrupt if they were to give black people these reparations. I disagree. Um, I've been on the earth for about 49 years. And uh, over the years that I've lived and people that have come before me, America has given trillions and billions of dollars for wars. America has given trillions and billions of dollars in uh, what we call foreign aid to other countries around the world. I think that they fund big time uh, uh, Israel. They're getting big time money. Our tax. And guess where that money's coming from? My tax dollars. My money. My reparations. Your reparations, right? So this country has been giving billions of dollars to other foreign countries around the world for years and decades. So this question about they would go bankrupt, if that's the case, why are we not already bankrupt right now? Now, of course, we owe China money. The American dollar is not really worth anything. If you look in the back of a dollar, it says if this money is legal tenure. It doesn't worth nothing. It's paper. The gold standard has been taken off of the money a long time ago. The one thing that holds the dollar up is the petrol, which is why America is so much in bed with oil across the world, the thirst for oil. But I'm just bringing this up because we make a lot of excuses for why this country could not do. They could do. Believe me, they could because they, they spend money all over the world. Now, reparations plan. Now, a reparation plan that focuses on closing the racial wealth gap would actually cost significantly less than that. So he's basically saying that a lot of us would say that it would take tens and trillions of dollars. But he's saying that an actual reparations plan that is focused on closing the racial wealth gap would actually cost significantly less than that of a trillion dollars. As of 2010 census, there are 42 million African-American or black people in America living in the United States. Considering the pre previous mentioned statistics from the Pew research, the racial wealth gap sets at about 130,000. That number is likely to go higher today. OK, however, he says for conveniences, let's say. This is what the brother says. Let's say that the goal of our plan or the reparations plan is to provide each African-American or black person, as I like to say it, each household with one hundred and twenty five thousand in value. There are a number of different ways to do this. Now, I think when I listen to this brother, I heard this brother on the radio program that I listened to. He said that black people should get one hundred and twenty five thousand annually every year that money should be popped into our bank accounts along with other benefits educational benefits social type benefits 
Now, some of you may agree, disagree, and say, look, it should be more money than that. But this is what I'm saying. This is what this brother's plan or what it would look like. And before I end the program, this radio broadcast, I'm going to also get into uh, what my plan would look like, which is similar in some ways, in some ways not. Now, cash payments and financial ass assets plan. The brother goes on to say to give all 42 million African-Americans 125,000 would cost five point twenty five trillion as I stated, as he stated later in the piece, as he's going to state later in the piece, a lump sum payment is none desirable. So that money would likely be paid over a period of time. Now, the brother argues that a reparation plan needs to be generational. I agree with that. In order to be successful, though it would last anyway from 50 to 100 years. If we say that we're going to pay 42 million African American or black people $5.25 trillion over 50 years, then the cost of reparations is about $105 billion a year. America drops that in a bucket almost every year or over the years when they're giving money to Israel. They're giving money to these foreign entities that they're in business with when they give, they call it a uh, foreign aid, right? The IMF, the you know, international banking systems and all these sort of things that go on in this country. So a hundred and five billion to black people at a pop of a hundred and twenty five thousand that we would get in it. Uh, every year between 50 and 100 years looking at generational building generational wealth and that to me i don't care what people think about well what what are black people going to spend don't worry about what black people are going to spend their money the black people that are financially astute are going to invest it black people who are not as financially astute will have to create programs with this reparation reparation money to educate them on proper management of their money now, I know that people who win the lottery, they go broke, but this is not the lottery. We're talking about $125,000 each year annually to black people for the next 50 to 100 years, which will go to your, <laughs> your grandchildren. So even if I was to piss off my money, even after I pass away, if I piss off the checks, my daughter will be getting those checks for the next 50 to 100 years. And this, and this is the plan that this brother is talking about now. And it, it winds up to be $105 billion a year. America could do it without bankrupting itself. Believe that. Now, for comparison, the United States government spends $604 billion on national defense. So America spends $604 billion on a, on a, on a national defense. It's less than that. Okay, defense. In 2016, they spent $604 billion in national defense. 15% of the total spending and the net interest on government debit payment, interesting, were about $240 billion, family. Let me hit the uh, bell on that. Can you believe that? Can you believe? Can you dig it? Can you dig it? However, the $5.25 figure is likely to be accurate for several reasons, his brother goes on to say, for several reasons. The first is that the plan is focused on the household level, not the individual level. The second is the is that the number of African Americans or black people is going to increase over time. The federal government expects the United States population to reach 417 million by 2060, the year 2060. If we believe that African Americans or black people will remain at 14 percent, now they got us at 13 percent, maybe 14 percent of the population. That means that there will be 58 to 60 million African American or black people living in the United States in the next 40 to 50 years. You got that. This is an increase of almost 50 percent 
from current population numbers. The federal government estimates, the federal government, let me say it again, estimates that there are 2.63 people per household in the United States, dividing 42 million by the number gives us, as the brother says, 15.9 million households and divided by 60 million by that number it gives us at it gives us 22.8 million households mm. consolidating that birth and death rates are not stagnant neither is the number of people the number of people living in each individual household, folks. You're listening to Information Man Radio. Hope you're enjoying. Information is power. In the United States. Now, it is difficult to calculate how many total households For the death over the span of the program. So you can't calculate that. I mean, people in society, people are living longer because health care has gotten better, but there's going to always still be people that are going to pass. So like the brother said, it's hard to calculate that. Okay. Now, I'm going to say this again. It's difficult to calculate how many total households will actually participate in the program over over. 50 year period okay to account for the deaths over the span of the program now he says here he estimates that the total number of individuals involved would be 20 percent more than the number of participants about half a century half of a century from now to then okay for Conveniences, this brother says for conveniences, he's using the 2016 year, the year 2016 to estimate, to use as an estimation of 417 million United States citizens and about 60 million African Americans, black people. Now, the brother goes on to say this. This is very important. Adding 20% to that number would give us a total of, are you ready for this? Drum line. All right. 72 mm, billion dollars African Americans who would have participated in reparations over a 50 year period. So we're talking about a number would be in a total number of 72, about 72 billion. No, 72. Woo, yes, yeah, 72 billion. Let me uh let me um, let me look this over right now real quick. Hang on folks, why? Check this out a little bit. Okay, we're back to the program. Yeah, so that's that's the number, 72. It's a big number. I'm going to put that on the screen. <laughs> Good number there. African Americans who would have participated, participated in the reparations over a 50-year period and assumed the number of people per household remain constant. That would give us around 27 million households, given 27 million Households, 125,000 each would cost $3.375 trillion over 50 years. That would average out to a cost of $67.5 billion annually for compare. Now, that's that's the numbers. Now, for comparison, again, the United States government spends about 49 billion on foreign aid in 2016 they did now this check this out they're spending 40 49 
billion dollars on foreign aid. Like I said, they're giving money, our tax dollars to other people in other countries who don't even live here. But yet we are citizens. We bust our ass, our ancestors bust their butt and they won't give us anything. And they're spending more money to give people in other countries our money, but don't want to give us our, our own money that they, that's owed to us based on reparations in history. And it's even cheaper and less than what they're already getting. So those of you that I've been on panels with, those of you out there, YouTube and Spreaker and out there in the world who are saying that, oh, America's going to go bankrupt, that there's not enough money for all of us. That's a that's not true. That's a lie. That's not true. That's false. The brother's breaking down good numbers. He's giving you the numbers. He's showing you what America spends on foreign aid, what America spends on national security. They spending more money on that annually and what they would give us over a period of time between the 50 and 100 years would be a drop still in the bucket overall compared to what America already spends. Let me move on. Considering the number of each household would get approximately 2.500 a year, this money could be received in cash, but it could also come in the form of a bond bonds or certain types of investments, vehicles. For instance, let's consider the S&P 500. There are a number of mutual funds available that tracks the index. The S&P 500 average returns of a 9 to 10 percent annually. This could be misleading. So for the sake of the argument, the brother says for the sake of the argument, let's Use a rate of return of 6% using the black rate calculator. Calculator. This is calculated. He sets the term to 50 years with a rate of return of 6%. A zero in, uh, initial, initial investment. A zero initial investment. Now, an additional investment, an additional investment, his brother says, of 2 2,500 annually in a tax rate of 5%, these reparation programs would receive tax benefits, but can fit everything into the post with total invested capital of 125,000. The final number with compound interest would be 300, whoo, 3,088. Point seventy five. If you believe that the S N P five hundred would truly return ten percent a year, it would not. That number would be two point two hundred thirty six nine hundred and ninety three thousand. We're talking about in the thousands. There is a argument that the capital should be invested in safe assets and that it's a debate, folks, to be, okay, how to be held. So it should be a debate to be held. And there's going to be many debates. We have debates on YouTube. We have debates in the mass media about this whole issue. Now, the brother goes on to say, however, the S&P 500 is regarded as one of the safest instruments with which to get market exposure without the risk of more complex financial products. The brother goes on to say, I would also be considered in the development of reparation plan. Now, he says, I would also like to note, let me correct what I just said here. The brother says, I would also like to note that I did not consider inflation in these projections it would need to be considered in the development of the reparations plan so he did not consider inflation but like anything in this in this society you always have to consider it and make the adjustments accordingly and that his plan would just have to be that way now there is a a a, a, a an argument to be made that providing 2.500 to each black household annually would not do enough to close the racial wealth gap. That is because for many of the families already trapped 
in the debit or in other poor financial situations, the, that money would immediately be spent as soon as it is received. Well, of course, building wealth requires that those that receive it save money and let it occur interest over time. Now, I've been saying it. There's got to be there's going to be programs to assist people. Not all black people don't know anything about financing, but those that don't know much are going to need programs that can be put in place by us to assist them. Now, given individuals cannot be trusted to save enough money for retirement on the other, on their own, perhaps a reparation plan could operate on a similar concept and thus the 2.500 2,500 annual pay that each of us would get every year annually would be put into an S&P 500 share bonds or other relative safe financial instruments for a set period of time that would allow the asset to occur interest and ultimately increase the wealth of the benefactor or the person that's getting the uh, reparation, black people. OK, the downside. Now, but I like the way the brother kind of looks at both sides of the angle here. The downside is that there is a large percentage of communities that would rather have their money now and spend it up front. Of course, many Social Security recipients or people who get Social Security would likely feel the same way. But we nevertheless would be happy to receive. They would be happy to receive their checks in the mid 60s. Perhaps if these accounts are not assessed, say, let's say he says here in the event of death, they could be um, given to the relatives. Like I said, if I was to get a check, 125000 every year annually, and I pissed off the money and I die, pass away, whatever happens. Those checks will keep coming in and my daughter would be the benefactor. Let's say my daughter is better with money than I am. So somebody would still get that money because this is about generational um, wealth, trying to build generational wealth. And I know that there's people out there in our community who may not be the best with money. And there's those that are. These are just the facts. Every community has these things. Now, military model. This brother talks about the military model. The military model while the, the cash model consists of direct payment, the financial uh, assets, the military model focuses on providing benefits through means of cash, through means of the cash. The goal of providing 125000 of value would remain. However, the benefactors, your family, would receive benefits somewhat similar to the military members today. Okay. That means a program offering something similar to what the GI Bill and the VA loan gives to people who benefit from that in our society right now. Currently, the GI Bill pays all tuition and fees for in-state students in college along with monthly housing allowance, which tends to be over $1,000 a month. Now, I believe that black people should be exempt from all, should not have to pay for any college at all under my under what I'm thinking. But this is what this brother has laid out here. Now, this lasts for about 36 months. So he says that program under the, the GI Bill, the VA loans lasts for about 36 months. The VA loan program allows veterans to take out loans without the requirement of private mortgage insurance. Interesting. Or in many cases a down payment so if you're a veteran in the military under the gi bill you're a veteran you can get a home without the worry of a down payment and high interest rates now that i can deal i think that people deserve that right now without any damn down payment and without any interest rate whatsoever okay now this type of let me go on and say here the loan program allows veterans to take out loans without any requirement of private mortgage insurance or, in many cases, down payment. These loans are guaranteed by the United States government 
this type of plan is is a risk that is that it would not be as effective. So he says there are risks involved with the military plan. Now he goes on to say that is because education alone alone has shown not to do much in the closing of the racial wealth gap. So he's saying not just education alone is going to close the uh, going to close the, the generational wealth or the get wealth gap, folks. You're listening to Information Man Radio. I want to thank you all for being here. Information is power. You are listening to Information Man. Please make sure to subscribe to his channel. All right. Thank you for your support again, everybody. Um, the type of plan is likely to be more politically popular than the first. Than the first, however, there is a risk that would be as a, not that that would be as effective. So there's a risk involved, but this plan would be more popular with polit politicians. The brother is saying now. Let me go on on to say he goes on to say still carrying the risk of default. Now here he, this is where the problems are. That is because education alone has shown not to do much in closing the racial wealth gap, and home loans still carry the risk of default for borrowers. True. We should this brother says we should also remember that that home owned owned by African Americans or black people tend to be worth less in comparison to home owned by whites. I wonder why. This is in the in the pelt and this is in part due to redefining which has redlining. Let me correct myself. This is due to redlining. Redlining which has made it difficult for black people to purchase homes in particular neighborhoods but it also due to outright discrimination and things like white flight. Now, how many of you out there know that in Los Angeles, California, neighborhoods like South Central L.A., uh, the whole Crenshaw area, those areas, South Central L.A. area, was, uh, was originally before black people migrated to the West. Um, originally, these were white neighborhoods made up of U white Europeans that had immigrated over from Europe. And then when black people moved into the neighborhood, Eventually, you had white flight. So these things happen. Okay. Now, the brother goes on here, combining com combination plan. The combination plan would combine the details of two plans mentioned above while still giving each family appropriate 125000 in total value. That would mean a combination of cash payment financial assess, uh, assets, and a program similar to the GI Bill and VA loan. So a combination of the two. You heard me say it. It's what the brother breaks down in his, in his article. Now, a generational investment for reparations to be successful, it would be, it would have to be generational investments. A one-time lump sum payment is less feasible politically and less desirable practically now he goes on to say a one time lump sum payment would likely lead up uh, um, a purchase and would not come with the same kind of financial security as an annual as a as a um like a pension right like a big lump sum of money boom give me this right now OK, you know, like when people win the lottery, they get they get a choice over. Do they want the money over a course of time or do they want a lump sum? Now, a lot of people who get a lump sum, you know, you want your money now. But a lot of people who win the lottery, they lose their money because one, they try, they don't understand financial and economic uh, um, investment. And that's where the education component can come in to teach people proper ways to invest their money. Those who need the help, because not every black person doesn't have the knowledge of financial awareness. A lot of us do. Some of us don't. Just want to keep that in mind. People in general don't in this country uh, know a lot more about financial. Um, I mean, we're so drawn down in our in our, our 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 debt with credit cards and all this sort of stuff. So let me um, let me go. Let me um, take a break for a moment. <laughs> Listening to Black to Black. 
everybody. Don't forget my Black to Black series. What I'll be doing, like I told you before, that series will be for me to do unusual stories and subjects and issues. I am going to be getting into the Illuminati. Does it exist anymore? Do we give it too much power and emphasis? I'll be talking about Committee of 300. I'll get into the 25-point plan for world domination. I'll get into the issues around that heart project that they have. Uh, does it manipulate weather? Um, I want to definitely go into black matter, dark matter, and, 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 and talk some more about that. I definitely have that up to, uh, in the works. There's a lot of things that I want to do. It just takes time. Um, but I'm certainly going to do it as uh, long as I got the breath in my body and <laughs> the mind is working right. So uh, let me get back into um, the presentation. Um, this is a lot of information, folks, but I'm glad that you're bearing with me. So, so he goes, the brother goes on to say reparation program should instill. Let me see. He goes on to say here, a one time lump sum payment. I did go over that uh, financial secu uh, uh, security as a, as a, as a, per, as a, like a pension, which um, he says uh, to pay on a monthly basis. So this, this is, um, these are all different ideas he's throwing out here. Payments on monthly basis, payments yearly. Reparation program should, in, should instill be conducted over a period of decades with a idea period being anywhere from 50 to 100 years. Now, he's emphasized that earlier in, the, in this article. Now, this brother goes on to say that this allows for wealth to be um, accumulated over time, okay, by families over time. This wealth, excuse me, can be passed down on use to invest in other appreciating or other types of assets to grow your money, to invest your money. Very important. That's how you, you, you gain generational wealth. One of the least known contributing factors to the racial wealth gap is the lack of inheritance. OK, so a lot of times when we're on these live streams, we're on we're on the news, we're, we're listening at the news, we're listening to podcasts out there. People are talking about, well, why is it that black people can't do this and do that? Other groups are doing it. Other groups have been allowed and able to develop generational hair inheritance and generational wealth over time. This uh, this style of reparation this brother's talking about would give a boom to inheritance over 50 to 100 years. So if I'm gone, my daughter benefits. Uh, if it's 100 years and my daughter is gone and she has a child, her child benefits and on and on and so on. I like the 100 year mark, but personally, I think it should be forever. Forever. No limits to this, in my opinion. And I feel very explosive about this. Very satisfied about this, folks. It's thundering outside right now. I'm in the How's everybody liking this studio that I'm in? It's a beautiful studio that I'm in. Uh, I'm moving up in the world here <laughs> in my uh, studio right now. Things are really working out for me. <laughs> but let me um, move on with the article. The wealth, this wealth can be passed on down uh, or used to invest in other types of assets. One one generation to another generation contributing to factors to racial wealth gap, which is a lack of inheritance. When significant wealth is accumulated by African Americans or black people or families, it is often for the first time. Just like when you say, hey, I'm the first to go to college. I think I to say that my damn self. It's a damn shame. We're going to be able to say not the first, but we're going to continue and continue and continue this right now. They have often not been given money. Black people have not often been given money for a down payment on a house or to cover student loans. Now, when you look at uh, Mark Zuckerberg, the guy that owns Facebook and many of these uh, white guys who own these social medias, they come from generational wealth. They're able to say, hey, uncle, hey, dad, can I get a little bit of money? That's how Zuckerberg got his got Facebook started. He got some generational wealth money from family. Now, look at, you know, you've heard what's happening in the news where you got these rich, um, narcissistic, entitled uh, celebrities getting their kids in school, lying about their athletic prowess, lying about their academics, and they're paying millions of dollars to get their kids in these schools just for the sake of them kids being in the school, right? 
That's generational wealth. Black people, when the hell do we have money just to throw around like that? We don't. But some people do. And you've been seeing it on the news lately. So let me um, go on to uh, continue with the, pro with the program. I hope you all are enjoying the broadcast. Thank you for your support. Thank you for being here. I'm really enjoying this style. Uh, this is the style that I'm going to do along with the Black to Black. So, you know, I'm just coming at you with different styles, um, presentation. It's the same. You know, my presentation pretty much is pretty consistent with how I am. But um, I hope you all are liking what I'm doing with this premiere, this premiere video I'm doing and uh, broadcast as well. Live from this lovely studio that I'm setting in. It's just a beautiful place. I'm going to continue uh, using this studio. So um, let me go on and um, continue with the presentation. One of the least known contributing factors. Now, I went over that area. They often not been given money for down payments on houses or to cover student loans. These type. These types of payments, along with inheritance, are major drivers in the promotion this is the information man. I'm back. A little bit of a boo boo in between. I was talking about drives. Uh, let me do this right here. I want to give a quick summary of the area that, that this brother is talking about in terms of cr uh, the creation of a new federal department, right? Now, that federal department would be a department of reparations. And I don't like a lot of bureaucracy. And I think some of what he's proposing around making reparations work for black people is having a sort of a bureau, a, a federally uh, fact, uh, fact checking department that would make sure that black people don't get uh, bamboozled out of their money. They don't get shyster, that they'll hold different entities accountable because you know, when you come into money, uh, people would like to take your money from you, excuse me, and bring up my volumes. And so, um, he talks about reparation programs would be enormous long-term investment in the black community. The caution of the new federal department would be necessary in order to ensure that the progress of the program to regulate outside actors who may try to squander, play a lot of games, you know, on black people and try to swallow them out of their money, out of their new wealth being generated, okay? Perhaps this would be called the Department of Reparations. A apartment seal would depict the hmm, uh, promise made, the, the famous promise made to black people in 1860 that they would get 40 acres in a mew. So the brothers already got the seal uh, created for this new department. You could argue that the... <clears throat> Reparations, excuse me. You could argue that the reparations program should be run by an independent government agency. I would agree with that. The Federal Reserve is run independently, right? But I still don't like the bureaucracy. I think if you start getting into agencies, it could create another big bureaucracy and just increase government, right? And I know a lot of conservatives don't like big government. I don't particularly care for big government either, but that's a concern I would have with something like this. Now, uh, the benefits to being an independent agency would include more um, uh, executive branch power. The agency hid would set terms to serve to to uh, serve out. However, being a federal executive department would allow greater visibility and greater transparency. It is a debate worth having, is what the brother is saying. At any rate, the department would be tasked with doing several things. This is how um, when you say, hey, give black people money, they may spend it all up. Well, he's talking about creating an agency, bureaucracy, which I'm not a big fan of, that would monitor the progress of black people as they get this money and make sure they're not swindled out of their money and mistreated and what have you. And education is a big part of this. Now, one, monitor the racial wealth gap between medium black and white families. 
okay, implementation of actual reparation programs itself, whether that is the cash payment plan, the military model. So remember, he talked about the cash. This brother has a couple of models. There's a cash payment model. There's the military model. The military model, I'm going to say again, is like the GI Bill, where black people get certain benefits, just like uh, military veterans who don't have to have a Dell payment when they buy a home, right? Or certain, I believe black people should get free access to all medical care, free college, the whole nine yard, period. Okay, so the, you got the military plan, you got the combination plan, which is a combination of both the military plan and the cash payment plan mixed together. Okay, now ensuring that the benefits above are actually being received and that the newly created wealth in the African American community is not being squandered off by outside actors. Now, we know that family could be a big problem for us, okay? Some of us got family members that are trying to rip us off of our newfound wealth. So that's something you gotta watch out for. It's not just agencies squinting, you got family members, but that's a that's more of a personal matter for people, but that's something that you gotta look at too. These may be private corporations that could include a wide range of institutions that could probably rob black people of this newfound wealth. Because believe me, if we get the check, if they cut the check, you're going to have everybody and their mama trying to be inside your pockets. They're not just your family, but you're going to have these institutions and swindlers running around. OK, and then fourth, identifying and potentially uh, situations where assets owned by black people, primarily property, are valued significantly less than compared to property owned by whites. That's another area they want to look at under this reparation plan. Uh, now, he states here, primarily con he's primarily con concerned with plan three, okay? And that's the cash payment plan because that's the plan that you can be most uh, manipulated, okay? So he has some concerns about that plan. Let me, um, before I uh, get back into this, hang on for a moment. <laughs> the truth. You are listening to Information Man. Please make sure to subscribe to his channel. Okay, we're back at it. We're back at it. We're back at it. Thank you, everybody, again, uh, for bearing with me. I know this is a long uh, live stream, a long premiere video I'm doing here, more of a premiere video. But uh, this is this is very important information that this brother has uh, put together. Now he says that the part. Now he says that number three is a concern that he has. That's the plan where you give cash payments, right? He says that the newly department would need to regulate power and the brand mandate, the board mandate, to make it happen. Okay, a reparations program would likely lead to the creation of a new industry entirely focused on taking the wealth. Mm, think loans, sharks, swindlers, and financial advisors. That's right. That's right. Because look at our look at a lot of the athletes. They get swindled out of their money. I think Kareem Abdul-Jabbar got swindled out of a hell of a lot of money in a bad oil deal that he tried to get involved in. Now, fake investment schemes. The Department of Reparations would be tasked with identifying and regulating these bad actors. So I'm going to say that again. So they're talk he's talking about creating another bureaucracy that would manage and police and make sure that black people are not ripped off of their reparations under this plan. Remember, and once I'm going to say this again, $125,000 um, every year for black people. Um, Every year, annually, 50 to 100 years. I like 100 years, but I like better, as I said before, forever to you no longer here. And then it goes on to your, own, to your other family members. That's how it should be. Now, he said here, previously home owned by African-Americans tend to be worth less than compared to their home owned by their wider counterparts. OK, now bookings found the following. This is an organization that homes of similar quality in neighborhoods with similar amenities are worth 23% less. So let me just break this down to you. 48,000 per home on average amount to 156 billion, okay? In commemorative, in losses, basically in losses, folks, okay? Now, in major black neighborhoods compared to those with very few or no black residents, Let's move on. 
the essential means that home owned owners owned by black families are worth less than homes owned by white families for no other reason than the color of their skin. The phenomena is more pronounced in blacker neighborhoods in, in the na blacker in blacker neighborhoods is regular rigorously uh, amenities in the surrounding surrounding areas. Let me correct my myself right there. It says blacker the oh there we go now the blacker the neighborhood the blacker the neighborhood is regardless of the amenities of the neighborhood so basically no matter uh, how black no matter how nice the black neighborhood is nice amenities nice homes uh, home values still fetches a lesser value than those homes owned uh, by uh, white people so that's another inequity that goes on Okay, now the fourth from the list above would deal with identif identifying these situations throughout the country. So this department of reparations would identify these issues, identify comprehensively how black people are being treated in these areas. Okay, now check this out. From the list above that, I, that, that I've been talking about throughout this whole presentation, that list they the military model, the cash payout model, um, says here, he says here, a situation could mean that partic but particularly cases where the difference in value between the comparable black and white owner home exceeds 40%, then the federal government will give a tax credit to the person who purchased the home equal to the 40% disparity. Now, the tax credit could be used. The tax credit could be used for overall several years. That would act as a subsidy of sorts, which could increase the home value in blacker neighborhoods while avoiding needing the federal government to purchase the homes to maintain particular value. Now, the question we have, folks, the question is how to pay this program, how this program will pay. Very, it will vary. Roughly estimate between 125,000 to 27 million black households gives us to a total of 3.375 trillion over 50 years. That is 67.5 billion annually. The federal government spends about 4 trillion, folks, 4 trillion they did in 2017. So the government's got the money. This this throws the argument away that if we give this reparation to black people, the country's going to go bankrupt. You can throw that argument away. OK, now that would mean that the reparations plan would be only one point six percent of the federal budget, a percentage that could actually decrease over time. We talked about life expectancies, things of that nature. Now, in 2012, 15, 2015. Patricia Conley wrote that rising taxes on the top 1% to give this group a tax burden of 40% would generate $157 billion in the first year. Okay, that is over double, that, that's over double the cost of reparations plan annually. New consumption tax or sin tax, maybe even carbon, if you want this to be green, okay folks, could also be used as a source of program funding as could the reduction of certain tax breaks and assumption across the board. There is also the option of simply strengthening the current tax enforcement programs as it has been estimated that the United States loses nearly $200 billion per year in tax avoidance. OK, so this whole thing that the country is going to go bankrupt is not true. And I said earlier that they give foreign aid to people. They're giving billions of dollars. The military budget is bigger than what they, they would give us. Uh, the foreign aid budget is still bigger than what they would give us. So this whole thing that they don't have the money. And I've heard black folks say, that, oh, if they give us the money, we're going to the country's going to go. Broke. That's not true. Not true. OK, I'm giving you the numbers now. Proponents of the reparation plan also might say that rightly in my in, in, my, in his mind, he says that the United States already spends a billion dollars if 
effectively oppressing black people. That means putting us in jail, prisons, the whole system, right? Think about how much it costs to incarcerate someone for a year. 45, it's, it's about 30,000 to 45,000 a year to incarcerate one man. I work in the prison system. And so we can actually send kids in the state of California or across the country to school for free. Now check this out. The cost to increase someone for a year, to incarcerate someone for a year, could estimate up to, like I said, 30,000, 60,000, 45,000. Okay, about 2.3 million people are locked up in the United States with black people making up about 40% of the inmates. That means about 920,000 black people are in prison each year. If each inmate costs the government, state or federal government, 45,000 a year, that means 41.4 billion is being spent locking up black people each year. Any successful reparation plan would positively change the social economics. Okay? Status of black people as a group. Less poverty is correlated with fewer arrests in prison. Okay? Same thing with uh these, these programs that they would call entitlement programs, the welfare program, programs for uh, uh, for uh, housing like HUD programs, uh, like medical care and all of that. If black people had this inflection of uh, wealth and just to make it clear, uh, white people are on welfare more than black people. They're, they're on the system a hell of a lot more than we are. They're the biggest users of the welfare system. And then you got corporate welfare too. Don't forget that. But if black people had this influx of wealth, that would bring money back to the country because the country wouldn't have to spend all this extra money on so many of these social programs and the housing programs and the Medicare programs for this particular group, black people. That would be another savings to the country. Okay? So uh, black people each year... Any successful reparation plan will positively change the social economic of black people. I must repeat that. Now, if reparations could cut the amount of black prisoners in half, that would also represent a healthy, a uh, big fat 41.4 billion number, meaning 20.7 billion would be saved annually for the United States of this America. That is already nearly one third of the annual cost of this reparations plan that the brother is talking about. Similar ones could significantly reduce or reduce in public housing, reduce public housing and health care. Like I said this before, reducing. So you got the issue of food assistance, cost of, of uh, health care and housing. This reparations plan or a reparations plan like it could cut down on that expense for the country, reducing, it could reduce Public housing, health care, and Medicare. Food assistance programs could be cut because of this, okay? Because you're inflexing a, a level of wealth into the black community that it has never had before, okay? Now, social economic status of African Americans. So you're basically giving the social economic status of black people in America based on reparations, who deserve it, we do, an influx of wealth that could cut a lot of our problems in these social areas. Now, a significant percentage of the program costs could annual can actually be paid by the need for fewer prisons and fewer black people on public assistant programs. So for you black conservatives out there, conservatives who say, oh, you know, we got to cut these social programs. Will you give us our reparations? OK, which we deserve. And you would cut the social programs in half. You wouldn't need them with, the, with, with this brother's plan if it would if it could fly. OK, but the numbers that he put out are very good numbers. And I just wanted to bring that up. This is very important. I'm going to end the program right now. Midstream in my broadcast, I had cut in, but I want to thank you all for being here. And here we go. Thank you, everybody. I want to give a shout out to O'Shea Duke Jackson. It's been a great He's a great brother. He's got a great show. Check me out over there on Sundays on his Sunday Rumble shows. Make sure you check out uh, the Black Brain Trust, Super Trez, um, Prophet of Thought series. It's a lot of good brothers out here doing some good things on the um, 
YouTube. Shout out to Tony Garrison too and Brother Art. Shout out, shout out to Brother Logic. You gotta tell the truth always with these reports. Tell the truth. Yes. Man, I love this studio. You are listening to Information Man. Please make sure to subscribe to his channel. Thank you, everybody. I will be back with this presentation again. Radio style, baby. So for the naysayers that say the reparations couldn't work, it can. There is money. Thank you, everybody. Good night. Wherever you are in the world, day, night, morning.